Were you involved in an accident and want to sue before your faith healing? Did your spiritual warfare get a little too physical? Were you caught laying hands on someone without their permission? Hi, I'm a pastor, but I'm also a lawyer, so I can help you in your unique situation, not just in the worship house, but also in the courthouse. And who does the defense call? Did I get a witness? And then I saw the defendant enter the store. Testify, brother! Then, after that sicko killed him, he filled up his tub and took a bath in the blood. Are you washed in the blood of the lamb? If you need spiritual or legal advice, please contact my office for help. Not available in all states or tribes of Israel. Offer void of working on the Sabbath. Oh boy. Even I don't know what that has to do with a worship song. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eric Rock, and this is Worship Song Lyric Analysis. For those of you who are new here, welcome. Thanks for joining me today. In this series, we go through worship songs, both old and new, and try and figure out, A, if there's any doubt or confusion, what do the words in the song actually mean? What are they saying? Are they trying to tell a story? What's going on with the words in the song? But more importantly, B, we try and figure out, are those words biblical? How do they match up with the Bible, the Holy Scriptures? Today, we're going through a newer worship song, my Testimony by Elevation Worship. If you're unfamiliar with Elevation Worship, the band, or Elevation Church, the church that that band is from, I'd recommend checking out my video on Rattle, uh, one of their other songs. I will link that in the description. I'm not gonna go super deep into the theology. If you want to know more about the church and the theology, which I would totally recommend if you're playing the song in church, then I would recommend doing some more research. I will also leave some more links to those in the description below. But on to the song itself. My testimony was written by Brandon Lake, Christopher Joel Brown. Yeah, he's stopped referring to himself as Chris Brown. I wonder why. Stephen Furtick, who is a guy. You're not David! And Tiffany Hammer. And Despite the band being called Elevation Worship, this is definitely a horizontal worship song. Not addressing God directly, except for the bridge, but joining with other believers to talk about what God has done in their lives. It specifically talks about your own testimony, which is a powerful witnessing tool for believers. But how biblical is the song itself? Let's jump on in. The song starts off in verse 1. I saw Satan fall like lightning. That's some pretty crazy imagery, and actually, it's straight from the Bible. In Luke 10, 18, Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like lightning. Y you, you see the issue there? Jesus saw Satan fall like lightning. All right, let's get some context here. Most biblical scholars believe that Satan was not always the devil that he was actually an angel before then, and actually probably one of the head angels. But he got prideful and wanted to be like God, so God cast him and about a third of the angels out of heaven, those other angels becoming demons. Most Bible scholars think that passages like Isaiah 14, 12 through 15, or Ezekiel 28, 12 through 19, are actually applied to Satan, who fell from heaven. And this line is a little bit weird because we as believers have not seen Satan fall like lightning. That happened long, long ago. So it is in the Bible, but in the literal sense, it, no, you haven't. However, in the figurative sense, yes, resist the devil, and he will flee from you, so you can see him run. So I'm personally not 100% opposed to singing this line. I just thought that context is super important here. Same for I saw darkness run for cover. And this is from that same story in Luke 10, 
where actually the disciples had been casting out demons in the name of Jesus. And they came back and were like, hey, this is so awesome. We can cast out demons in your name. And Jesus is like, I saw Satan fall like lightning. And this time it is actually something that we as believers do. I mean, you probably won't cast out too many demons nowadays in the US, but again, resist the devil and he will flee from you. You can make darkness run through the power of Christ, which is within you. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. All right, this is so cool. Despite those other miracles, Jesus says, do not rejoice that demons are subject in your name. Rejoice in this, that your name is registered in heaven. As cool as it would be to cast out a demon or do any other miracle, the coolest miracle, the one that we should never forget or take for granted is that we as sinful people can have fellowship with a holy God through the blood of Jesus Christ if we put our trust in Jesus and repent of our sin and can ultimately be with God forever in heaven. That is an amazing miracle that we should not take for granted. We should not just get over that. That is an amazing thing. All right, the song continues in verse two. I believe in signs and wonders. While that statement itself should not be super controversial, you know, I am the Lord your God is anything too hard for me. God does miracles throughout the scripture. Everyone should believe that God can do signs and wonders. The controversial part of that song is, do signs and wonders still exist and are happening today? Okay, this is my quick hot take. I think that God does have the ability, obviously, to do miracles now just as much as he did back then. But nowadays, and especially in developed countries, such as the US where I live, they very rarely happen because we have the scriptures. Jesus once told the parable about the rich man and Lazarus, and long story short, they both die, and the rich man wants uh, Lazarus, the one who is in heaven, to go back and tell his brothers about the good news. But God says that they have the scriptures, and if they don't obey the words of the scriptures, even someone coming back from the dead will convince them. So we, in developed countries, have the full Bible. And if people don't believe the words of the Bible, even a miracle won't convince them. So that's why there's not too many actual signs and wonders. Don't be deceived. There's a lot of false teachers out there doing fake signs. But we have something arguably better than a sign or wonder. We have the Bible. I have resurrection power. Okay, and this is kind of a weird wording. Romans 8, 11 says that the spirit who raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in us. So technically, yes, God's resurrection power does dwell within us, but it's not our own. We as human beings in and of ourselves don't have the power to resurrect ourselves. So it, that's kind of a funky wording and definitely something I think that needs to be explained to a congregation or thought through very well when using the song in personal worship because it's definitely a weird way of saying it. But the miracle that I just can't get over, my name is registered in heaven. My praise belongs to you forever. All right, I do like how the song again circles back to that one miracle that we shouldn't get over is that our names are registered in heaven. You know, as cool as having a sign or a wonder, you know, raising someone back from the dead, you know, making a paralyzed man walk again, as cool as those signs or miracles would be, I would argue an even greater miracle is raising spiritually dead people back to life again. So in a sense, we shouldn't need those signs and wonders because we have the greatest miracle of all. 
So I like how the song circles back on that, you know, even though it's talking about those signs and wonders, the greatest one is one that we do have and one that happens every day when people trust in Christ. All right, now the song goes to the chorus. This is my testimony from death to life because grace rewrote my story. I'll testify. In Ephesians 2, it talks about how we were dead in our trespasses and sins, but God, who is rich in mercy and grace, made us alive together with him. We were spiritually dead, but by the amazing grace of God, we are alive with him now. That's something that should fill us with wonder, so much that we should want to tell other people about it. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. Yes, in Galatians 2.16, it says that a person is not justified by works, but by faith in Jesus Christ. So it's all Jesus Christ and his work on the cross that justifies us. Again, the grace of God. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Your testimony is personal to you. People who don't believe in Christianity can argue with you about theology or what you believe, but they can't argue about your personal story. And in fact, I would say that it's a great way to engage in the culture. As Christians, we're called to engage in the culture. And right now, something that is important to the culture is your personal lived experience, your story. And we as Christians can say, hey, this is part of my story, what God has done in my life. This is my experience. And people can't say, no, that didn't happen to you, obviously. So it's a powerful tool in saying, I was here and now I'm here. I once was lost, but now I'm found. So I think it's a great way to engage in the culture right now. Right now, you're probably thinking to yourself, Eric, isn't testimony a legal term that witnesses give in a trial? What does this have to do with Christianity? Well, to answer that, I'm actually going to push it over to mid-segment Eric to tell you more about what testimony means. Take it away! Hello, and welcome back to the best mid-segment in the entire episode, Learning the Original Languages with Eric. Also, sometimes called Word of the Day, because we learn Hebrew and Greek one word at a time. Today's word is martyreo, a Greek word that means to testify. And yes, it was used as a legal term in court cases at the time, much as it is today. It comes from the Greek word martis, meaning eyewitness or earwitness, someone who has experienced something for themselves. Then, when that person tells someone else about what they've seen or heard, that's martyreo, testifying, basically confirming the truthfulness of an event or a claim by someone. For example, in the Bible, John the Baptist testified about Jesus, confirming to everyone the truthfulness of his claim that he was the light. John the Apostle testified to all of us who read his gospel that he was an eyewitness to everything Jesus did and that it really happened that way and that Jesus' claim to be the Son of God was truthful. But in the Bible, there's not just examples testifying about Jesus. You can testify about anything. Jews could testify about how Paul was a Pharisee before his conversion. or Paul testified of the generosity of the Macedonians. But you don't just need to martyreo by words, Jesus testified who he was by his deeds as well. And while we as believers today can't martyreo about Jesus' ministry on earth, we can for sure martyreo about what God has done in our lives. 
1 John 1, 13 says, We proclaim to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may have fellowship with us. And our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. As we tell others what we have experienced, the end goal of this shouldn't be just a legal confirmation. It should be for them to believe in Christ Jesus and to experience that fellowship with us and also with the Lord. Our testimony isn't just dry legal information, it's our own story of how Jesus saved us and changed us and is there for us every day. Believer, may we want to, long to share that with everyone we know today. This has been Learning the Original Languages with Eric. Now, back to your regularly scheduled programming. Awesome. The song continues in verse 3. Come together, sons and daughters, bought with blood and washed in water. Bought with blood. That's a weird picture. Yeah, I'll take that. How much does it cost? About two liters of blood. No, but this actually is biblical. In Ephesians 1.7, it says that in him, i.e. Jesus Christ, we have redemption through his blood. And this is because our sin required death. And instead of our death, Jesus Christ took our death on the cross. So that's why it's in his blood that we have the redemption of sins. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son, and Father. Yeah, so God is one God, but he is three persons in that one God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. 2 Corinthians 13:14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. While we have one God, they are three separate persons. And all of them have done a part in the work of salvation and justification. So we can sing praises to all of them. Our God will finish what he started. Yeah, in Philippians 1.6, it says that he who began a good work in you will be faithful to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God started this work in us that we can testify about, but he will also continue working in us. How cool is that? All right, the bridge is super simple and continues this theme. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe. The one funky thing about this, again, is that the rest of the song is definitely very horizontal, talking about God and what God has done in their lives, and then the bridge suddenly switches to being vertical, talking directly to God. I don't think this at all should stop anyone from worshiping to this song or any song that switches between talking about God and talking to God. If you can't sing this song without thinking about it now, I'm very sorry. But it definitely continues the theme of, you know, the rest of the song is talking about what God has done in your life. And then this last part talking about, hey, if God has done all of these great things, he will continue to do great things in my life. And that is an awesome thought to think about and to praise God for, that he will continue to do great things in your life. We need to believe that as Christians. All right, so that was my testimony by Elevation Worship. Is it biblical? I, I would actually say for the most part, yeah, pretty much. I, there's a few lines in there, obviously, that I mentioned that if you're playing this in a church, I would definitely recommend explaining to the congregation so that they know and can worship to it in the correct way. But taken as a coherent story, I love the message that we should never get over that our names are registered in heaven and we as sinful people can have fellowship with a holy God and that our testimony is so important and we need to share that with everyone. That being said, if you don't feel comfortable singing the song in church, or if you don't feel comfortable supporting Elevation Church by licensing the song for church, that's a very valid point as well. There's so many good theological songs out there that you shouldn't play this one if you're not fully okay with the whole song. That's fine, we're all at different points in the journey. Thanks for joining me today, friends. I hope you found this helpful and that maybe you were edified or encouraged or 
found something in the Bible that you hadn't thought about for a while, I just pray that God would fill you with joy at knowing that we as believers have our names registered in heaven, that he would fill you with hope that if you're not dead, God is still working in you, and that he would every day continue to fill you with his peace.